book, right? We can have a dialogue. All right, do you take the view that the argument is... Do you take the view that the argument is... bitch ass up, cuh! Stop pinging me, fuck nigga! Like, what the hell? Do you, do you, Who do you think what? you are? Wait, can somebody stop in front? Okay, yeah, so do you take the view that the argument is valid? Hmm? Do you, t do you think your argument is valid? Uh, oh, yeah, I think the argument is valid. Okay, then let's okay, just start. Let, okay, then let's start here. How does conclusion one follow from P one and P two? Wait, this is the exact same thing I just told you that I didn't care to argue over. I don't care to engage. You can say you, you can say you don't know. Wait, 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 wait. It's like trying to go over a, dis a discussion about whether or not the sky is blue. Like I think the I think its validity is just so trivially true, right? That I do not care to actually continue arguing over. Do you, do you know? You do you know how it follows? Okay. Okay. Maybe maybe you don't know how it follows. Maybe maybe you don't know. That's fine. Let's just see if we can figure it out. Okay. So what do you mean by? Let's just see if we can define some terms here. What do you mean by contingent? What do you mean by contingent? Something. Okay. Your mic. Your background noise is really loud. Okay. Something that could have failed to exist. Something that relies on something else to exist. All right. So. I rely on my mother to actually come into existence. My mother relies on somebody else. This time the third, I rely on food to actually, you know, survive. That's what okay, I get it. So you gave kind of two descriptions there. You said something that could have failed to exist. Then you said something that relies on another. Is it like a conjunction of those things or is it like which one okay. or is it both? Okay, if something could have failed to exist, then there clearly needs to be like, there clearly needs to be something that actually needs to be present for it to actually, like actually exist. I, I, I uh, know that's, that's false. Okay, why do you think it's false? Yeah, because there could be, for example, an uncaused item, like an uncaused object in the world. Nevertheless, it could yeah, also be it could also be a possible world where that object doesn't exist, at least logically. Wait, 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 wait okay. To clarify, nothing caused that, right? Yeah. Okay, define nothing to me. Um, what do you mean, define nothing? Define just the, nothing. Not, not, just like the negation of anything. Okay, so it has okay, so anything that would also include causal power. Anything, um, anything sure. Means, wait, wait, anything means airway. Every anything is general, right? So it would also include like uh, it does not have any causal power, right? So if it has no causal power, sure. to say that oh, it is wait, wait, wait. So if it has no causal power, to say that it caused something, right? So just going to be a logical contradiction. Nothing has no properties, right? The property of like, like there's power, a confusion there. Just going to be contradictory to the definition. Hmm? Yeah, it seems like there's a confusion there. A lot of people make this confusion. So you're kind of using nothing there as like a noun. Um, I'm using it as like a quantifier phrase. So like when you say nothing caused it, you say, it sounds like you're saying, well, there is this sort of thing, nothing that caused the object. I'm just saying the object just wasn't. I'm just saying one second, well, well, one second, one second. Well, let me finish. I'm just saying that the object wasn't caused by anything at all. Okay. I'm not using nothing as any sort of format, right? I'm not using it as in cause some definition that I just made up. I asked you what your definition of nothing was. You said the opposite of everything, right? Or the opposite of anything or the absence of anything, right? I tried to explain to you that under that definition, that would also be inclusive of causal power. Anything is a general term, right? Now, unless you can try and hedge the argument and say, say, oh, well, not anything. I mean, almost anything, right? Again, that's just going to be you hedging, right? When nobody, whenever someone says no, that's anything, just confusion. They aren't, wait, wait. Whenever someone says anything, they aren't specifying as to oh anything in this context, oh anything in this other context, right? I need you to actually just give me a reason as to why, like, give me a reason yeah, as that's, to why that's confusion. Hmm? Yeah. So you didn't even you didn't track the you didn't track what I said. That's fine. A lot of people get confused about this. So what I was saying um, is that um, well, the object in question in the world. Why anyway? The object in question in the world. You might say that it was caused by not anything at all. So it just wasn't caused by anything. I'm not saying that there is a state of affairs which is nothing that caused the object. Rather, the object wasn't caused by anything. So you're kind of making. You might seem think it's like a somewhat of a grammatical error there when you kind of misrepresent what I said. Dude, okay. Your background noise was too loud that I could barely hear what you said. I need you to repeat that. Yeah, so the object in question just wasn't caused by anything at all. It wasn't caused by anything. Okay, yeah, so it wasn't caused by anything at all. That's that's not what you said. That's not what you said initially. You didn't say it was uncaused. When I said right? caused by nothing, I just mean not caused, caused by anything. Wait, you didn't say it was uncaused, right? You said that nothing caused that. 
I asked you that question very specifically. Yeah, very so specific. when I said, when I say nothing caused it, of course, like, there are different sort of ways of talking about these things. But when I say nothing caused it, by the way, I actually, toy, I realized my noise suppression wasn't on, so I, I fixed that. But when I said nothing caused the object, all I'm saying is that um, the object is uncaused, so it wasn't caused by anything at all. Yeah, right, so, so I hope that okay, that Yeah, so like, um, it's going to be some sort of, okay, if nothing caused it to come into existence, right, then uh, that would be akin to saying that, oh, that it is uncaused, and then I'm trying to explain to you how nothing has no causal power. So if there's a point in time... That, that's confusion. Came, not there, wait, wait. If there was a point in time that in which it came into existence, there was nothing that quote unquote changed beforehand for it to actually come into existence. Either you need to be denying the PSR, right? And you also need to just be affirming a logical contradiction based off of the definition you gave earlier on within this debate. Yeah, so, I mean, you could say, you could just say that in that world, the PSR isn't true. You could stipulate that. But I don't see what the contradiction would be because all, of, all that's being fixed here is that it's not the case why, that the object was caused by anything. Is. And so, like, let's just make sure let's just make sure we iron out what the confusion was. The confusion was earlier. It seemed like you were saying that, you know, there is this kind of state of affairs called nothing that quote unquote caused the object, and it seems like that's a grammatical confusion because nothing there is just being used as a quantifier phrase. So when I say, you know, caused by nothing, you might as well paraphrase that to be something like not caused by anything at all. You said the same point as before. I need to address the first thing you said. We can talk about the other thing you just said now, right after that, right? When you say that, like, oh, well, it's possible for the PSR to be false, what I take that to be is, oh, well, in some possible world, right, there's like, um, there's a state of affairs where there's not a sufficient reason for something to be caused, right? And whenever I take this, um, something as being, oh, it is a sufficient reason, it means, oh, well, something had to have caused it. That's what I take to be a sufficient reason, right? Obviously, this wouldn't apply to necessary beings, right? But clearly, if this thing didn't always exist, right, then that would also mean that, like, um, it isn't something that is necessary, right? And you're, so you're, what you're trying to affirm to me here is that, oh, there is some possible world where nothing, right, is able to cause, right? But that just seems to be analytically false. It seems to go against the exact definition of like, Yeah, you're just still confused about this. Okay, so maybe you're not following. Okay, let's just sort of highlight where the confusion is, because I think you might be able to understand this. So. What's not being said is that there is, quote unquote, um, something called nothing, and that's kind of causing the given object. What is being said is that the object rather is just uncaused. It's not the case that anything caused it. Okay, so there's a difference between sort of using nothing as a noun or using nothing as a quantifier phrase. So for it to express the expression in first order logic, you might say, it's not the case that there exists an X such that X was the cause of the given object. In a first order, right? I promise you, I don't need you to express in a first order logic, right? But the your what well, your argument just boils down to is you're trying to affirm to me that oh well in some possible world, right? That um, what's it called? There's a state of affairs where this thing just popped into its existence. But if it popped into its existence, right, without anything causing it, that would entail true randomness, right? And I don't think true randomness is possible. That just seems to not be the case. I'm not sure what you mean by well, true randomness. Yeah, there. You, you might you, you might describe this as you might wait, i don't know wait, wait, i'm not wait, sure wait, wait, i'm not sure what you mean by true randomness though you might describe this as a quote-unquote random event i'm not sure what you mean by true randomness oh did he definitely wait, wait did he defend himself oh is he running okay oh is he back now so when i told you for like six times that oh my sister's calling me right i don't know why you kept speaking i don't know if you, are you deaf are you like inbred is there an issue here okay yeah so i'll just i'll just continue what i was saying it's fine yeah it's fine okay so i'll just continue what i was saying so i'm not sure what you mean by true randomness you might say that this is a quote-unquote random event you might say something like that like sure i'm fine with using that sort of language but let's just remember why how we well, let me finish let's just remember how we got here how we got here is you gave two definitions of contingent. One was like something that relies on another thing's existence. And another thing you gave was something that could have been otherwise. And I was asking you, which one is it? Is it both? Is it neither? And you said, well, um, the first one just entails the second one. And that's what we're fighting over right now. It's not clear to me that the first one entails the second one because you could have something that is quote unquote uncaused, but nevertheless could have been otherwise, at least in a logical sense. OK, 
Okay. If you okay, if you ask me a question, I expect to be able to respond immediately. I don't know why you are trying to like slip in some other stuff afterwards. So I'm going to just dismiss that, right? So you asked me whether or not when which one of the two things I put forth am I actually using, right? And that one of them you disagree with. I think both of them mean the same thing. Whenever I say contingent is something that could have been otherwise, and when I say that it is something that relies on something else for its existence, I mean that if the thing that it relies on, if it relies on something else for its existence, and that thing was not the case, right? Or if that thing just did not exist, then this the, the contingent thing would also not exist. I think it's very, very obvious that they mean the same thing in this context. So I don't know why you keep trying to question me or something that just seems so intuitively obvious that you can't even like disagree with it. I think mm -hmm. it just boils down to some form of dishonesty or you just not understanding the argument. Okay, let me know when you're done. trying to ask me for clarification when it isn't needed. Okay, yeah. So to be clear, so okay, then let's sort of analyze those terms. Let's see if they do mean the same thing on your view. When you say could have been otherwise, are you talking about on a logical modality? Uh, yeah, possibly. Okay, so it's like, cool. Okay, cool. It's like as as in like it's logically there's like a logically possible world where that item does not exist. Sure, sure, fair enough. And then when yeah. you say um something that relies on another's um existence, are you just talking about that thing having a cause? Yes, I'm saying it okay. has a cause. Okay, but okay, but those two terms don't mean the same thing. Saying X has a cause is not the same thing as saying that um there's a logically possible world where X doesn't exist. Right. So one is a one you could say yes, is like a causal exactly. concept. You could say cause. Cause is the other is a sort of a quote unquote modal concept. So when we say something could have been otherwise, at least in, in the logical sense, we're just saying there's a logically possible world where that thing doesn't exist. Yes, and if I say that something is caused by something else, I, and I'm telling you that this cause isn't something that's going to be necessary, it means that, again, in some possible world, this thing isn't going to exist. If it relies on something else for its existence, right, and this um, thing that relies on to exist does not exist, right, therefore, very, very clearly, that means that this thing, again, could just have possibly been otherwise. So, again, I don't really see the confusion. Okay, let's then let's sort of illustrate this. When you say, um, let's say, depends on another thing's existence. Is it, when you say, does the phrase depends on another thing's existence for you, does that just mean logically could have been otherwise? You know, did you just mean the same thing analytically? Repeat what I said. Yeah, my question is, does the phrase depends on another thing's existence, does that just mean logically could have been otherwise? When the phrase depends on something else for its existence, yes, it means that it's lo again logically could have been otherwise. Okay, perfect. That perfect. So, on could perfect. Have logically been referenced. All right, so then let's just sort of simplify the argument. Let's just paraphrase that. Um, so we'll say, and give me like 15 seconds to just that. Okay, so to be clear, now pre one says every contingent thing logically could have failed to exist. Is that accurate now? Broader phrase has something that relies on something else for its existence, but I'm using them interchangeably. So. Yeah, sure, fair enough. So yeah, because they mean the same thing. So we could just paraphrase that. And by and that's true by definition, right? Because by contingent, you just mean logically could have failed to exist, correct? Uh, yeah. When I say contingent, I mean yeah. have logically failed to exist relies on something. Okay, yeah. Exists. Yeah, so that's somewhere. So we know that we have a trivially true premise. And then P2, when you said that, well, now, now P2, here's the question. When you say that there can't be an infinite chain of contingent things, now by now when you say infinite chain, are you just talking about an infinite, like, cause? You're talking about presumably an infinite cause. That is truly infinite so it's like there would be an infinite regress of contingent things so i rely on my mom to exist my mom relies on someone else to exist at infinitum right it goes back infinitely so if it goes back infinitely there would be no actual way for us to reach this current moment if well if there's okay. an infinite amount, wait, wait 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 if there's an infinite amount of time between when i get up to when i actually leave my house then i'm never going to leave my house like okay oh, no, but Okay, but when you say that there can by infinite chain, if the chain is uh, dependence, by dependence you just mean logically could have been otherwise, right? By dependence, I mean that's something that relies on something else for existence. And by that, you just mean logically could have been otherwise, correct? Mm. That's what you said earlier. Yes. Okay. okay, so okay, so now we can just define this term. So we can say dependence, dependence just equals logical logically could have. 
Yeah, yeah, I just dropped it for a second so I could write this up. Okay, I'll just go on mute. Give me like 10 seconds. Speak, you can see. Okay, cool. So by dependence, we just mean logically could have done otherwise. So when you say there can't be an infinite chain, so so I guess like I'm, then I'm not sure how we'd understand P2 here. You, what what is what what does infinite chain mean for you? Okay, the reason okay infinite chain something that like oh it'd be an infinite regress in this sense. So something that has an end but quote unquote no no starting point as to what so it has no cause like or it has an infinite like. The chain of things that are quote unquote supposed to cause it, right? So if they have like um when I'm saying contingent, if I'm saying, oh yeah, contingent is just something that is caused to exist by something else, there cannot be an infinite chain of something that was caused to exist by something else, right? Because for that to work, right, that would imply that an infinite amount of time has passed for us to reach this current moment, which again just seems to be impossible and nonsensical. Maybe I'm not under like the semantics here seem almost like they seem very strange. Like let's just try to paraphrase. Um, is it correct to say that when you say like when you say like x object has a cause, um, that's it's correct to say that all you're saying there is x object logically could have been otherwise, right? Or logically could have oh, failed yeah, to exist. The cause could have been different. I don't understand like um, the okay, so, okay, let, so take an example. Okay, so take an example. Wait, that's not that's not what I was asking. But let's let's take an example. So I throw a ball on the ground. We might say like I caused the ball to fall to the ground. If cause just means logically could have done otherwise, how would you paraphrase that statement? Okay. The, okay, the ball could have logically fallen in some other manner. So when you say, oh, I threw the ball on the ground, right, and it bounced like three feet in the air, right, it could have logically been otherwise, right? It did not actually bounce. Um, it did not actually like a muscle called bounce three feet in the air after you threw it, right? And that um, it bouncing is entirely contingent on the person who threw it. So you think that when I say that I caused the ball to fall to the ground, that means the same thing as the ball could have um, fallen in a different way, the ball could have been otherwise, you think those mean the same thing? The ball could have fallen to the ground. Okay, if I say I caused the ball to fall to the ground in like X manner, right? Whenever I insert contingent or whenever I say like, oh, well, it could have logically been fallen in some other manner aside from the one in which it currently fell in. I don't, I don't understand the disagreement. Yeah? Like, uh, I don't, okay, I think, so, I don't really feel so to be, yeah, let, let me make sure, under, yeah, yeah, let me, let me make sure I understand you. So, when I say just take the statement, maybe I don't think you followed what I asked you. So, I, when I, I say like I am the cause of the ball falling to the ground, right? I caused the ball to fall to the ground. That yeah, means the same thing. As, that means the, the same thing the, as the ball could have been otherwise. That those two statements mean the same thing. It, it's logically possible that the ball could have fallen to the ball could have not fallen to the ground. So okay. if I say I logic wait, 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 if I say I caused the ball to fall to the ground, what that means is there is again a logically possible world in which the ball did not fall to the ground. I don't understand the confusion in terms of semantics. So can we talk about something else here? I thought we were making some form of progression, like, but wait, we- Yeah, I thought we are going somewhere. It seems like, I yeah, mean, I, I, I mean, I'm happy, to, I'm happy to move on from here. It just seems like your semantics are quite strange, but it doesn't really matter if that's what you were, if that's genuinely what you mean, but fair enough. Like, yeah, yeah, but, um, but then like, I guess like in light of your, oh, sorry, are you talking? Okay, sorry, Look, I, I was gonna ask you a question. With an infinite yeah, in light, yeah, in light of your semantics about the infinite chain, if the infinite chain just means an infinite causal chain, now I'm just not sure how, because if by cause you just mean could have been otherwise, logically, I'm not sure how to translate P2, because let's say an infinite chain, you're just saying like there cannot be an infinite causal chain of dependent things. Like how would you translate that where cause just means could have been otherwise? It's kind of strange. Okay, so how I translate that would be, okay, so there's an infinite chain of like things that as they are, they could have been something else. And the reason as to why they are the way they are right now is because of something else. But then if you ask, okay, well, why was the thing that caused you? Why was it that way and not same another way, right? Then you'd go, oh, well, because of something else. And then you keep going and going and going, right? But at the end of the day, for us to actually reach this um, current state in which things are as they are, right? That actually needs to be a finite, what's it called? Now it needs to be a finite chain. It needs, there needs to have a start point, right? For this them change to actually begin to progress okay well i suspect that there are actually more like semantic problems here but i can sort of just take what you're saying at face value so let's say like every contingent thing logically could have been otherwise that's true by definition i would say there cannot be an infinite causal chain of contingent things and how are you defining and by necessary being you just mean something like um 
a being that could not have logically been otherwise. So a logically a being that basically an act of spirit has no it has no potentiality. It exists as purely actual, right? But by so they, wait, 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 it exists as purely actual. It does not need anything else to cause it to be the way it is. It is the it is self causing basically. And the reason okay, as to why self causing is to I, avoid I, anything. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But I thought by contingent, you meant logically could have been otherwise. So it seems like by if since contingent and necessary are taken to be. Do you want me, um, do you want me to reward the argument so that they Do you want me to reward the argument so that the semantics are like uh, like easier for you to follow? Well, I'm just well, I'm just trying to disambiguate the terms here by necessary yeah, being. Okay, so let yeah, me just be clear. One of the so conditions that, for necessary yeah. being is that it has to like it. There's you know it logically could not have failed to exist. So for example, to say that the necessary being does not exist in will result in like a logical contradiction. For example. Yeah, yeah. The reason as to why it will cause a logical contradiction is because if it is supposed to have no form of potentiality at all. Right. If there's some form of possible world in which it could have not existed, that is some form of untapped potentiality that could have occurred. Why am I getting shot on in this game? <laughs> okay, yeah. So, okay, now, okay, cool. Yeah. So we're saying that a necessary being is just a being that, let's say, you know, is you know, could not have failed to exist. Um, yeah. It's yeah. if it were to fail to exist in a theological context or whatever. Yeah, I'm fine with all that sort of talk. And then, but now that I've clarified all the premises are saying, um, it seems like now I'm just even more unclear how the argument is valid. So now we might have to. You might oh not like this. But we might have to refer to that concern. Oh hell no! Are we going back onto the validity of it? I thought you. Well, I was I was willing to give you I was willing to give you a bit of a break and try to investigate the meaning of the terms if I could figure out how it follows. Okay, but yeah, now that we've I'm, done that, I'm actually I'm even trying, more unclear how the argument's valid. I just don't okay. understand how does it follow. Okay, we can we can do it like this. I'm going to try and explain to you. I'm going to try and like redefine the word for you, right? In a way where like in a way where it's easier for you to understand. So, well, I understand the terms now. It is it's a contingent thing. It's something that could have been otherwise, right? <clears throat> so the way it is right now, it could have been in any other possible fashion. So it could have um, <clears throat> either not existed or it could have existed in a completely different form, right? The reason as to why it existed in a completely different form, you can say it is either some form of contingent thing, right? Or it is going to be for some form of necessary thing, right? And this necessary thing here is going to be something that could not have been otherwise. It has no potential to be tapped into, right? It is just going to be the uncaused cause of the universe, right? It's going to be the uncaused cause for everything that occurs within the universe. Well, not everything. Okay. Does, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that helps. But there is, there's a simple thing we can do here, which is like, like I, I don't know if you're like. There's one. There's a simple premise we could just add that will just remove every validity problem, which is like, if we just add an, a conditional where we take the conjunct of p1 and p2, and we say if p1 p2, then the conclusion, and therefore conclusion. That will just make it. Do you want it? Are you okay for doing that? If, if premise one and premise two are con um, true, therefore the conclusion is true, something, something, whatever. Yeah, whatever we just add one more premise. Valid, yeah, that, that would just make it like clear, clearly formally valid. Are, are you okay with like adding that step or do you still have an objection to that? Oh, sure, sure. You can do whatever. Okay, yeah, let's just add that then. Okay, clear. And now, and then now, my contention will just be, yeah. So I guess, like I'd ask, like you said, there can't be an infinite chain of contingent things. I take it that you're saying that there, it's like logically possible to have the infinite regress of like the causal contingents. Like I know I understand that. I guess, like, what's what's the argument for that sort of claim? Hmm? Yeah. What's the, what's the argument for B two now? For like, um, there can be an infinite chain of um contingent things. I already gave the argument. Okay. What, what do you? Well, how well, how about you repeat it? Okay. The argument was, right, uh, actually, I'll put in an analogy so it's, it's simpler, right? If for us to go from point one, for point one in time to point two in time, then or for us to actually reach point two in time, there needs to be an infinite, like, um, there needs to be an infinite amount of time before, like, um, we reach point two, right? But we are in point two right now. But the, that would be like, for that, for us to be in point two right now, then there would have to have not been an infinite amount of time for us to need at first to reach point two because something infinite cannot actually end but if we know that there is an end point that means that it is not actually infinite 
And if it is not infinite, then there needs to be something that is at the start, some like chain, okay. some like link in the chain that does not actually need a link like in front of it to actually like function. Okay, I already that see the confusion here. So um, now here's one thing. I said. How, how are you actually defining an infinite? Because I can tell you an infinite can have an end, an infinite can have a beginning, an infinite can also have a beginning and an end. So I wonder how, I you're actually, how are you actually defining the infinite? Okay, I disagree with both of those things. I think on the, the way I'm defining infinity is something that like, or an infinite regress in this case would be something that has an end, but no beginning. And it's it's beginning just goes all like the start, it just goes at infinitum, right? So it goes like um, okay. 1.3, then it goes backwards, 2.9, 2.8 and, and infinitum, right? And an infinite would okay. be something that has no start or no end. Source, right? That like supports your argument. Because I've been reading, I've been reading, yeah. wait, wait, I've been reading up on multiple or infinite re regress arguments, and they seem to follow and they seem to agree with the format I'm using whenever I'm talking about an infinite regress. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I can send you. Yeah, I can send you. Okay, finish up then. Point one, point two, point three, then add infinitum. That's the way that most people agree that infinite regresses are some some sort of structure. So I don't know why you would be the outlier here. I don't. Like I don't think people most people agree with that. But like to be clear, yeah. So I'm happy to I can show you. Like, yeah, show you. I, I'm actually going to put in the in the chat a math textbook that actually gives the definition of an infinite set. And this is a very you know you might have heard of the Libra text textbooks, but um, that's where you can find the definition. I can roughly you might say a set is finite um, if the cardinality of that set is some natural number n, or the set is an empty set. And the set is infinite oh, if it's just not finite. Know, know, that's how I would define an infinite set. And that's the standard definition that might be in I don't know if you think that like I'm some form of math expert, but I'm just gonna show you every definition I see whenever I'm talking about infinite. Immeasurable or okay. innumerable great, something that is to be absolutely incapable of being measured or counted. Wait, where just, did you get that definition from? Sure, I'm just gonna sign it. From you where? Know, let me, uh, um, go. I'm just gonna screenshot where I got it from. This is from. Or no, just send the resource. There's no need to screenshot. Just send the resource yeah, in the chat. They say the resource. They say where it's from at the bottom. And then wait, there's this from Merriam Webster. Wait, more at work from the from the Century Dictionary. Wait, hold up. In, an infinite yeah. is a technical term in mathematics and set theory. We're not gonna be looking at some Google or Oxford yeah. definition phase. We're gonna look at a mathematical resource if we're getting the definition of an infinite set, right? What? Why, why are you citing that? Reason, because that's a right. this is a technical like what it means for a set to be infinite is a technical term in You will just be hyperbolous usages of the word infinity, right? Of course, these okay, well, doing wait, wait, of course, these people who are doing math are going to be included within this usage of um, the these dictionaries, right? Because the diction, the whole point of it is just to capture people's general usage of it. Unless you think that mathematicians aren't going to be included because they are special. Yeah, I, I think I, I don't think that dictionaries oftentimes when there are terms that are used in very technical ways in certain domains, um, at least in my a lot of times as i've seen dictionaries don't often define terms in such precise ways at least when we're talking about very the various domains but let me give you an example of why like your usage may be problematic how many how many real numbers do you think are in between one and two how many real numbers do i think are in between one and two i don't yeah. know i just assume that it's finite for us to, for okay us to it's not it's not finite wait, 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 wait. Wait, okay, for us to actually be able to reach point one and point two, we'd either have to pretend as if those if those like um number pretend as if those numbers actually just do not exist, right? Or we just um we just like I think the numbers would be fine now. Right? If you say that there's some form of infinite amount of real numbers yeah. between point one and point two, that I take that just to mean that oh, there are an infinite amount of or there are like numbers that we can actually reach and observe within real life. There's like a quantity okay. of yeah, that so we can observe I, I get it. So there's a few things here. So one more comment about your definition. So if you look at what you posted from Cambridge, another reason why so infinite, your second definition just says like God. 
Right, clearly, yeah. God, like, yeah, clearly you agree that God, that's not like a technical way that term will be used in mathematics. And the point I'm sort of making is like, when we're looking for definitions of these sort of technical terms, you know, it's preferable, at least by my lights, to actually go to the source we're looking for. So if we're looking for a mathematical definition, we'll look at a math textbook. If we're looking at a logic definition, we'll look at a logic textbook. But like one more comment here, which is like, um, the amount of real numbers between one and two is infinite. So an infinite you, you, set. Wait, wait, wait. However, that, um, you might say that that, that has that, a, that set has a beginning at one, and that set has an ending at two. Wait, I don't know why you're shotgunning me. I won't really be able to respond to that first. But anyway, my response to the first thing about how oh well they define it as God. The reason as to why they'd be including inclusive of God under that specific definition is because that's one of the properties that most some people assign to God whenever they're speaking at. Okay, someone that mm -hmm. has infinite that's power, right? right? Oh, wait, and some people just refer to God as an infinite being, right? Right? Of course, the whole point of dictionaries is to capture multiple people's usages of the word, right? Whenever I, they I say understand that. Wait, 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 wait. Whenever they say God's I, power I get the point. Infinite, There's no need to say that. Right? Hey, 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 hey. Whenever people say God's power is infinite, they mean it is something without end, right? So, of course, it would still actually capture most people's usages of the word. I don't get why you're disagreeing. Okay, I, I understand. I understand this. There's no, there's no need to have said any. I don't know why you said that. Okay, the point, look, the point I'm making is like maybe there are a lot of ways, there are a lot of loose ways people use these terms, right? But when I, at least when I'm talking about infinite past, so, so maybe you just brutally like you, you maybe you won't even. Well, one, well, one second, well, one second, well, one second, one second. Maybe you just kind of want to like sort of brutally like stick on like well, you know, you maybe you sort of want to brutally say, well, you know, that's just how I'm using the term. I, I just define an infinite as something that can't have an end, something that can't have a beginning, etc. Um, maybe, maybe you just stick with that. Um, I guess I'm saying like when I say when I use those terms, I'm actually using them as actually as mathematicians talk about them. So there's a few ways we can go here. We can say, okay, well, one, we can talk about the mathematical usage, or two, you want to say, well, I'm just kind of brutally using the terms this way, and I'm not sort of moving off it, and then we can just progress the argument. So sort of, which one do you want to do? Explain to me in layman's terms that anyone who's watching, who's going to watch this recording, is able to understand. Explain to me how the ma mathematicians define the word. Oh, I can just go wait, and ask chat. Wait, I, I, I can explain it to you, but are we actually using the mathematics definition? Because if we're not, why would I, I explain see it? If it actually disagrees with the definitions, as possible. Okay, yeah. So the mathematics definition would be an infinite set would be a non-finite set, and then the definition of a finite set will be um, a set that's either one empty or two. Um, there exists some natural number n such that the cardinality of that set is n, and so the cardinality of a set is just the amount of elements in that given set. Cardinality, dude. I'm going. I'm going. Just go search up. Search up on uh, Yeah. So, yeah, I can explain those terms. Wait, no, don't, don't read ChatGPT. That won't, that won't give you very good stuff either. So, the cardinality of the set is just how many elements are in the set. So, let me give you an example. If I have a collection of numbers one, two, three, the cardinality of that set will be three. There are three numbers in that set. Repeat what I said. Oh, actually, wait. Don't repeat. Yeah, I'm doing something. I, I can uh, repeat it. So, the card. Cardinality is just how many elements are in the set. So let's give an example. If so I have a set if, one, wait, comma wait, two, wait, comma three, the cardinality will be three. Wait, wait, which is what I'm seeing whenever I'm searching up. How is infinity defined mathematically? Infinity is a concept within mathematics representing a quantity of value that is limitless or unbounded. It is often symbolized by the, the symbol. I hope you already know the symbol. Mathematically, infinity can be defined as great, a number greater than any finite number or con as a concept indicating limitless or endlessness, such as in context of sequences, limits, or set theory. Yeah, that's a, yeah that's actually, I that one right there, that we're right there, a number greater than any finite number, that one actually is fine. But that doesn't okay. entail, but that definition is consistent with infinite having a beginning and having an end and having a buffer beginning and an end. Okay, if it is a number greater than any, okay, dude, if it's a number yeah. greater than any finite number, Right. right. I think okay. Actually, I don't don't even like particularly um with that def specific definition. Because why? Okay. Because of course, like you can say, oh well, if I'm going to count to infinity, right? I'm going to go from point A, right, and then I'm going to continue to count at infinitum, right, and then I'm just going to keep counting. Of course, that would be big greater than any finite number. But then, if okay. you want to define infinite, wait, if you want to define infinity as that, then that wouldn't really be something that is disagreeing with my usage of God. Because then I just okay, so do. Wait, wait, wait. Then I just put oh. finding God the thing at the beginning, which does is not rely on anything else to actually like um start uh, the count. It's something that that's great. Start the count on its own without anything else actualizing its potential. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And I would encourage us. Let's try not to monologue as we're kind of getting into the more technical aspects of this discussion here. So, yeah, so that's fine. But notice how that definition. So if you want to change, so let's be clear. I just want a quick yes or no answer. Are you changing your definition to this one? Uh, I'm not changing my definition to this one. I'm specifically trying to explain to you that the definition that you just said you agreed with is actually going to be something that disagrees with my usage of God.
Um, I wasn't talking about, I don't know what your definition of uh, God is, but my question was more so your definition of infinite, the, de the definition that you just, we just talked about a number greater than any natural number, right? That actually does cut against your definition of infinite because that's con that definition is consistent with infinites having a beginning and them having an end. But your definition just said something that doesn't have a beginning or an end. No, so that actually will put against your previous definition. The issue is my usage of the word, when my usage of the word was supposed to be an infinite regress, right? The word infinite on its own specifically isn't going to be something that is extremely irrelevant, right? I'm taking the usage of the two words in conjunction. So an infinite regress, again, is obviously going to be something that has an end, but no beginning, right? That just seems to be so. I oh. hope we can both agree that that's. Wait, I thought you said, wait a second. Earlier, wait, ear, wait, wait a second, Shara. Sure. Earlier, you said, wait, no, that, that just seemed to be changing what you said. Wait one second. Wait, the issue is, I'm Earlier, you said no beginning wait, wait, and no, and now you're saying it has an end. Which one is it? Wait, wait, I'm not done. So even if we somewhat agree with the fact that, like, or even if I temporarily steal man or temporarily agree to the fact that, oh, well, in some cases, people can define infinity as something that has a beginning, right, but just has no end. Right. Again, it isn't going to be something that actually disagrees with my the premises I've laid out because the premises wait, I've okay. laid out is trying to tackle the issue of an infinite regress. But so, wait, but now wait, now, now we're not following. So earlier you said you defined as something that had both no beginning and no end. Now just a second ago you just told me that it can have an end. So which one is it? No, I'm okay. I don't know if you're following. I don't know if we're tracking. I don't know if we're inbred. Can it have an end or not? What I was trying to say, what I was trying to explain to you, and I said this beforehand already, is that even if I temporarily agree with your definition, right, because I don't think it's actually going to be too relevant to the debate if I temporarily agree with it, Right. Why is it actually going to be something that disagrees with the premises I've laid out? Because specifically, the premises I've laid out are trying to tackle the point of an infinite regress, right? Not just something that is infinite on its own. You can say something that is infinite. Okay, okay, that, that's, that's great. Wait, wait, but, I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done. So okay, let's try not to ramble that. Something that is infinite is something that has no, that has a beginning but no end. Right? That just seems to go along with some theories that time is infinite and it continues endlessly. Right? But as long as there's some form of starting point, that is on you're, you're you're just rambling right now. Right. Okay, so so let's just let's just try to keep let's just again let's just try to speak concisely. Okay, so can an infinite regress have an end? Yes or no? Can an infinite regress have an end? It can have it can have an end point, but it can have no beginning. No. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Can have an end, but no beginning. Okay. Cool. Now I'm still okay. Now now what's the argument that and there can't be an infinite chain of contingent things? Now that we understand what an infinite chain or regress is. Okay. Well, give me a second, class. Let me fix this. Then. <laughs> Sorry. What you said? Okay. No. Someone was pinging me, but anyway, the reason as to why an infinite regress cannot exist just seems to I'm what's called because of the fact that if I rely on multiple other if i rely on like multiple other uh, points in time to pass for it to actually reach point x right so if i rely on if i'm in point x right now and i rely on oh point x1 x2 x3 x4 to actually reach point x right but those x uh, those like numbers seem to go on ad infinitum right it seems that we would never actually be able to reach this current moment right if I need to cover an infinite amount of distance, right, or there's an infinite amount of time that needs to pass before we reach this current moment, right, then that we would never actually reach this current moment. Okay, so it seems, I, I guess, like, um, I sort of get the thought you're making here, so I'm happy to sort of work off that. Um, what's the argument that you, you would never be able to reach today? As to why we'd never be able to reach today is because you'd imply that we would be able to cover an infinite amount of distance. So we would be actually be able to like um so how do I explain this? It'd be like there's like it's like Zendo's paradox, for example. We'd we'd never be able to reach this point or we'd never actually be able to move because there's an infinite amount of distance that is required for us to go from point A to point B. Okay, okay, now there is a confusion, right? So and you know so notice how you just said there's an infinite distance yeah. required to go from point A to point B. But kind of how you accurately described an infinite regress earlier, there just is no point A. There's no oh, starting okay, point. Okay, yeah. And so there's a point B, right? And we'd actually need to reach a point. Oh, there's no point B, but we'd need to reach point A. But for us to reach point A, we'd need to be going from like, oh, um, A9, A right? On A9 to A8, A7. And that just goes on infinite, um, infinitely, right? So wait, 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 what, 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 what are you saying? Wait, what were you saying? You said, wait, hold up. You said A9, A8. You said what goes on infinitely? Okay. If I say like, um, there's, 
the number 10, we're trying to reach the number 10. For us to reach the number 10, we have to go from like, oh, we're in like point nine right now. And there's an infinite amount of time, there's an infinite amount of numbers between nine and 10. We'd never actually be able to reach 10. So if there's an infinite okay, there amount seems, of time- There seems to be another confusion there. So again, so again, so now remember, remember on the infinite path, there just isn't the starting point. And we earlier, we seem to agree that the analogy with A to B infinite points in between, that just doesn't represent the infinite past because there is no starting point. Similarly, when you say, okay, between um, one and two, et cetera, between two numbers, well, that's just disanalogous because there just isn't a starting point on the infinite past. Yeah, but that inference okay, just so simply won't work. No starting point. Wait, okay, so if there's no starting point, right, then that would just mean that like um, nothing can begin or happen. Like, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to come Wait, what? Okay, what do you mean nothing? No wait, what do you mean, what do you mean, but what do you mean nothing can begin or happen? If there is no starting point to, okay, if there's an infinite regress, that would mean that there is actually no initial starting point, right? So for something to start, for me to start running, right, that guy, I'm also called, the action of me pushing off the floor would be the starting point, right? If there's none of that, right, and you're trying to posit that there's infinite amount of things before we actually push off the ground, right, then that would mean that there's no actual starting point. If this thing has no start, then it cannot happen. Right. It just goes on ad infinitum. Is wait, if what, like, oh, wait, hold up. Wait a second. Wait, wait, calm down. You're, you're saying a lot of stuff here. Let's just try to, let's just go piece by piece. So you said, wait, wait, one second. Wait, wait, Shinra, come on. Come on, wait, good. just calm down. It's all right. So you said that if an infinite past um, has no starting point, then nothing can ever begin. How is that yeah. different from saying that if it has no starting point, it has no starting point? Because an infinite past is a beginningless series. So the series just doesn't have a beginning. So it seems like yes. you were just saying something trivial there. I don't. I, I agree. If it has no beginning, it has no beginning. Sure. Yeah, but I'm trying to figure out like no why can't there be the infinite regress? The issue is if it has no beginning, that is using some form of necessary thing, and I don't. I don't think it's possible for it to happen. Okay. Yeah. So if you have. Okay. So that's just to repeat the claim. So you. That's just to repeat the claim that the infinite regress is impossible. I'm asking for the argument. I'm not done. I'm, not done. I'm, not done. I'm going to try to okay. simplify this in the way you can understand, right? So if it has no beginning, right, that would mean that this thing is happening without there actually being any sort of like cause behind it, right? So if it has no cause, right, that would mean that nothing caused it, and if nothing caused it, that would be logically impossible. Because not wait, hold up, wait, wait, hold up. Maybe that's just confusion. So the, the the series itself, the infinite series, could have no beginning. And by the way, at some point, if the natural language doesn't work and you're not clear, and I'm just gonna have to ask you for a formal argument at some point. So I'm happy to continue on this path to sort of help you out. But if at some point we're not clear on what the argument is, I'm just gonna have to ask you for a formal one. Okay. Now there, because I agree with you that the infinite series by definition has no beginning. But just because it has no beginning, it doesn't mean each item of the series isn't cause. For example, it could be true that every member of the of the series has a prior cause, and it could be an infinite causal regress. So again, it should just be characteristic of the series that every item has a cause. And so that isn't a problem at all. And you repeated the claim that the series would just be impossible, but that's precisely what's in question. So I'll just ask yeah, again, no, no, no. what's obviously, the argument that the infinite I'm series is impossible? Obviously I'm, repeating, I'm, obviously, I'm repeating all my conclusion would entail. Like, I don't think that would just be me begging the question. I'm not assuming, I'm not saying, oh, well, because of... Oh, Michael, that, that's fine. This, what's I'm the argument? Using, I'm not presupposing my conclusion being true for like during the mm -hmm. argument. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to explain to you, the, like, it's something that we can even intuitively grasp. We can just uh, um, grasp how absurd it is for something to... I, I don't know what into Wait, 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 wait. I don't have any intuition you're talking about. Wait, wait. It's just absurd, right, for something to have an infinite amount of moments before it, right, for that thing to actually occur. If I'm holding, wait, if I'm holding my mum up, right, but and I'm attached to a rock, that rock is attached to another rock, and that rock is attached to another rock, and that goes on infinitely, right? It just seems like it, basically what that's just trying to do. It just it seems like a weasley way to just say that oh, there's nothing actually that this thing is holding on to. There's nothing actually that like, there's no starting point here. And again, yeah, that's. If we, if we just appeal to the simple definition of what a start means, right? I, I think it just, like, it just simply just supports the argument I'm trying to put forward. Oh, okay, that, that's great, Shinra. So again, so all you've done is repeat that on an infinite series, an infinite past, there would be no starting point. That's true by definition, it's a beginningless series. Okay, so that's fine, yeah, there's no starting point. Now the question is like, what's the issue of that? Now you brought up this sort of rock example. If I'm tied to a rock, there's a rock spraying that, there's a rock spraying that. And, you know, could that go on infinitely? Yeah, sure, that could, you know, let's suppose that there was an infinite series of rocks. Then you'd be asking, well, what's the kind of starting point in the rock series? You just wouldn't be one because it's an infinite series. Now, I'll ask again, what's the argument that the infinite past is impossible yeah, no, the or the infinite is causal series is impossible? 
Okay, then the issue is, right, you're trying to make it seem like, oh, well, it's some form of contingent chain that can go on infinitely, right? But we know that isn't actually how, like, things in the real world actually operate. So if okay, you need well, to actually... Well, now, it, now I'm going to have to interrupt you there. Well, I'm, I'm going to... Sure, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to interrupt you there because you're actually not answering my question. I just started my statement, Chela. But anyway, if I'm sitting down at my table, for me to be sitting down, for me to actually be here right now, it is entirely contingent on the ground beneath me existing. And the ground beneath me existing is entirely contingent on the earth existing right and the earth existing is going to again just be contingent on like gravity right and again gravity is going to be contingent on something else right but for me to actually be held up on its own because each of these each of uh, or each of these individual things has no causal power to hold me up independent of something else right and this something else right has to again just boil down to something that has like the relies on nothing else to actually cause it so i don't understand like why you're trying to say that you are you keep trying to ask the issue here well not only have i provided it to you but we can simply just okay. again, just mean that it actually just seems to be absurd to us okay it's okay it's absurd. You, you've you been know? monologuing for a bit are you done mm -hmm. okay cool all right so we tried the natural language stuff and now i'm not clear what the argument is now we're going to get a formal one so let's just set the conclusion is there can't be an infinite chain of contingent things what's the first premise here I don't think I need to formalize the argument. Yeah? The, the syllogism, the syllogism I gave you before, so that seems to follow. Okay, so I, what's okay? Do you do you have a formal? Okay, okay. What's the first? Okay, one second, one second. What's the first premise of the argument? What's the first premise of the argument? The right. the one I already provided to you at the start. No, no, no. Now we're asking for an argument for P two. For P two, so for the conclusion. Okay. No, that's not the no P two isn't the P two is not P two is not the conclusion. It's a premise. We're asking for an argument for P two. No shit is not the conclusion. I think I've already given you the arguments towards P two. Okay, yeah. Well, now we're going. Now, now we're going to get a formal one. Wait, if you think if you think as if my argument is like has any sort of flaw in any sort of way, right? That you've been able to point out, we can just end it here. Yeah, so I'm happy. So I'm actually happy to do like, for, especially for people who aren't very well versed in certain things. I'm happy to go to natural language route, but that's only as far as I can see what the argument is supposed to be. I've heard you say various random things. Some of them I've responded to. Some of them I struggle to see the relevance. But I'm not actually seeing what the argument is supposed to be anymore. I'm not sure what the inference is. So one way we can do that, we can just explicate uh, the inference formula, and I can help you do that. So we so can take 20, we'll really take 15 more minutes, try to get the formal inference. Like, so what's, what's premise one of the argument for you two? I don't understand how, like, this is something that's, like, that is confusing for you. Like, it's something what's, that's very what's very premise like, one, what's premise wait, wait, one of the argument for you two? If I, I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done. If I have, okay, well, like, what's premise one, what, okay, so we're not, we're actually not going to ramble, so we're actually not going to ramble anymore. What's premise one of the argument for you two? So we, we can go back to actually being formal, right? But I'm not only my argument, sir. Again, for me to actually be seeing, be observing all of these pixels on this screen that I'm looking at, right, is going to actually be contingent on like the atoms actually existing, right? And no, okay, no, so no, now wait, no, so now you're not answering my question. So what's premise one of the argument for Peter? That's a good in this context, right? Or for this analogy, you wouldn't actually need anything else act, um, to actually function on its own. It doesn't require any external causal thing to actually affect it. I don't think I need to continue to formalize the argument for you, right? I think I've already given you the argument. It's something that we can intuitively grasp and intuitively understand the absurdity of it. So again, you can keep repeating the initial claim. Tell me when you're done with the ramble. Okay, so yeah, now you made there was one last claim at the end there. You said something quote unquote we could intuitively if we graph. I have no into whatever intuition you're talking about. I don't have the intuition. Well, if the claim is that the majority, if the claim, you excuse me, if the claim is that the majority of people have such intuitions that you know, then I, I again, I just don't accept the empirical claim. We could get into the empirics later. I, I doubt that you have a defense for that claim. But right now, I'm just looking for a premise from you. We're looking for P1 of the supporting argument for P2. I don't what know is who it? We is. Who would be we here? What is P1 of the argument for P2? I've already given you the argument, dude. I've already okay, no, okay, so now we're looking for a supporting argument for P2. What's premise yeah, one? exactly, and I've already given you the supporting argument in itself. You can keep Are saying, you refusing oh, well, to have formalize have the supporting you argument for P2? Saying, well, you can keep saying, oh, well, I don't have this intuition. The issue is, right, since it's going, obviously going to be um, uploaded on YouTube, we can just try to appeal to intuition. Okay, right? do, can you, really okay, can you, do you, you have a formal argument right? for P2, yes or no? Clearly, my intuition just seems to be the more backed one and the one that more... Uh, okay. Well, let me know when you're done rambling. But okay. Again, I'm not going to formalize the argument. You have a Okay, so okay, cool. Perfect. Perfect. I think and I think that's what you got there. So 
to be clear, just just so we're clear, you're refusing to formalize the argument for P2. Yeah, I don't think I need to formalize the argument. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, so I'm I'm happy with that. So now, so now, I mean, I'm just gonna say because you know, I, so we, we might as well resolve it here. I'm happy to I'm happy to say like whatever last thing I want to say. You can have the last word here. So yeah, I'll, I'll just, just say I'll like this. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Wait, sorry. What do you say? No, I'll just end the recording. If you think that. Yeah, you can end your recording. It's being recorded. You can end your recording. That's fine. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you know. Oh yeah, he left. Okay. Well, I can just give my last remarks. I I offer. I offered to give him the last word. He just ran away. So, it's fine. So, like I said, um, for this argument, um, P one is just like trivially true. I think it's analytically true. I tried going the natural language route for P two. Um, I didn't get anything that was a clear defense of P two. So when that happens, we just go to the formal route, and then he just refused to formally argue for P2. So that's where it is right now. Wait, Mason. That was fun. Okay. Questions, questions, questions.